Good evening. We start here this uh, evening. The Palo World Share Price has reacted positively to the news that the subsidiary, the Zeda Group, uh, which manages the group's car leasing and rental businesses, AVs and budget vehicle rental companies, will be listed on the JSE next month. The unbundling forms part of the firm's a, a completion of a sales program in its non-core assets. The business unit contributes 12% of revenue, which is just under 6 billion rands. Subject to the approval of the JSE, shareholders are set to receive one Zeta share for each Palo World share that they are holding. CEO Dominic Siwela, who has been quoted in a statement describing this as a big sweet moment joins us now. Mr. Suela, thank you very much uh, for joining us uh, this evening. Why do you feel this is a bittersweet moment uh, for the Palo World Group? Well, I, I, I guess, you know, Avis has been part of our Palo World stable for a number of years. And uh, it's a business uh, that, you know, um, during COVID was badly impacted. And, uh, you know, we went in, fixed the business, brought in new management, Turn the business around, you know. Um, so to, to see them spun off is rather bitter. However, having said so, the sweetness part of it is that you have a business that's going to be able to be showcased on its own term by its own management in a stage like the JSE. Particularly when the uh, tailwinds, you know, are behind the business. When you look at the number of uh, inbound tourists that are yet to come, you know, particularly with a weaker end. You know, uh, but also you look at the products that have come to introduce, you know, on the leasing side in terms of commercial vehicles um, and other products that they've, you know, introduced in that business. I think, you know, uh, we, we're selling this business at a time uh, or unbundling it rather when it's doing very well and there's more to come. And I think the right thing to do for the shareholder is for, for us to unlock it through enlisting. One of the things that has been said about this decision to unbundle and list Zeda separately is that uh, when they are operating as a standalone company, they will be able to pursue their own growth strategy uh, autonomously uh, uh, when it comes to also capital allocation. Yes, I, I think, you know, just to understand, you know, our battle world has got a very tight and strict requirements in terms of capital allocation. We prefer to allocate capital to those businesses that are generating, you know, return above, you know, our, our work rate, which is about, you know, 13% hero rate. And um, we also prefer businesses that are generating free cash in conversion to EBITDA about 50%. And um, if a business doesn't, you know, um, contribute those, you know, uh, results, we tend to not fund it. You know, so when you look at an Avis business, it's a very capital intensive. For it to grow, it requires vehicles. But at the same time, when you look at its weighted average cost of capital, it's between 10 to 11%, which is below what we regard as threshold. So we think as Barlow World, we are stifling the growth of a business like that. And as a standalone, they're able to, 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 to um, raise capital that's far cheaper than ourselves. And, and, uh, and they've done so. You know, uh, so far, and they've also raised, you know, future growth, you know, uh, capital. So, yeah, I'm, I'm wishing them well in that regard. A good performance overall in uh, the prior period. Let's talk about uh, the Russia business, the Russia operations. You're still operating there amid the sanctions. You've been forced, as you announced today, to actually write down a billion rand from the Russian business uh, due to those uh, sanctions. Besides that, I'm sure there have been uh, some uh, bottlenecks in terms of operating there due to the sanctions, but many people would be wondering why you haven't done what many companies have done in terms of uh, pulling out of Russia as a whole? I, I think, you know, to, to be able to answer that, con that question, you need a bit of context. Our world has been operating, you know, for 120 years. We're celebrating 120 years this year. We're celebrating 95 years relationship with Caterpillar. You know, in that 120 years, we've had two wars, world wars, you know, and, um, you know, operating in various countries. We've operated in Angola where there was a raging war, uh, a civil war that raged for more than 20 years, and we operated in, in, in Angola. And uh, we are operating in Mozambique, and currently you still see Mozambique being unstable. 
You know, therefore, the reason to stay in a country, particularly if you run emerging, you know, um, operating in emerging countries, you cannot just make decision on a whim. It is important to take a holistic view to say, you know, um, what are the long-term prospects of being in a particular country? When you do go through a downturn, you've got countermeasures that you put in place, like the safety of your employees. You've got countermeasures to ensure that, you know, you comply with all the required legislations, be it in that country or, you know, even those that are imposed by, you know, sanctioning authorities, be the U.S., the U.K. and U uh, EU. Therefore, we feel that, you know, our view is to take a long-term view because historically we've seen that even in terrible wars, you know, those war ends. And uh, whether through peace negotiations and after the end of the war, business continues. Therefore, it is the view that we said, you know, we don't want to be taking a position like a politician or taking a moral stance. A war is dead irrespective of where it happens because people die. You know, but I think fundamentally, though, it's important that as a business, you know, we think first and foremost about our employees and the long-term prospect of Palo World, you know, uh, for another 120 years. Let's talk uh, briefly about the financial performance, which you also announced today. Um, you saw a group revenue uh, going up 9.5% to just under 50 billion rands, uh, and uh, still paying a dividend, although it was uh, a cut uh, this time around, but still higher overall compared to the prior period. How uh, do you think you have uh, performed in the past year? I think, you know, the dividend speaks to a, a good performance. I think the way to look at the numbers, first and foremost, you look at our balance sheet. We're currently sitting with 9 billion rand worth of cash. You know, when you look at our net debt, you know, including Avis, it's uh, about 4.5 billion. When you strip out Avis, you know, we'll be sitting with a net cash position in Barlow World. And obviously with a cash on hand of about 9 billion, we're sitting, I, I've got a, a different problem. I've got a lovely problem of having a business units that are generating cash. And when you do so, it becomes imperative that you allocate capital accordingly. And your first move is to say, do you have debt? If you have debt, you pay it down. If you don't have debt, you say, you know, can I buy back shares? And in a market like this, you know, obviously after Russia, the market discounted our share price significantly. And we bought back our shares, you know, in, in that regard. But after having done so, because you can only buy shares to an extent that you have enough liquidity, you then went on to say, you know, um, maybe it's also good and prudent to also distribute a, a, an additional, you know, um, a, a dividend because when you do your solvency test, you know, um, and, and liquidity test, you realize that you are still strong. We can still be able to fund growth even after having paid that, you know, uh, um, special dividend because our view is that, you know, um, looking forward, the businesses that are left in our stable, excluding Russia for that matter, are still very good and they're going to be very cash generative. Therefore, I'm going to always have the challenge of say, how do I allocate capital? And you can't simply say you're going to buy anything that's on the market. You've got to be able to buy something that makes sense within the guardrails that you've set for yourself. And, and uh, that's how I intend allocating capital while I, I still have the, a, a privilege to serve as a CEO of Palo World. Dominic Suela, thank you very much uh, there for your time. He is the CEO, the group CEO at uh, Balo World, reporting that uh, they are going to list separately their car rental and leasing businesses for Avis and Budget uh, in the first week of December, while they are adamant that they will continue to operate in Russia in spite of the challenges there and the sanctions that have been imposed on Russia. And they have over 400 million rand that, of course, they can't get out in cash in that country, which is obviously still involved in that war in the Ukraine.